every now and then a game will come along and just blow its load all over the internet's face. We're talking let's plays, we're talking memes, and if the game has wacky emo dances, we're talking fat stacks of online articles proclaiming the death of Fortnite. You know the deal, sometimes video games, like everything else in the modern world, just go viral. You think it can go viral? I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. The year is 2009. You're on something awful, a pretty wacky internet forum. There's a creepy pasta Photoshop contest. Your name is John Slender. You create two paranormal Photoshops for the competition. You create Slender Man. Internet users around the world gaze upon the Slender Man and collectively shit themselves to oblivion. Amidst the shit, stories begin being shared. Myths and legends are told around reddit forums about the tall, pale man. The Slender Man becomes a figure of modern folklore. The year is 2012. You're on YouTube, ready to watch a new video from your favorite creator, PewDiePie. He is playing a brand new indie horror game called Slender. He shits himself. No! You shit yourself. Yeah! We all shit ourselves. Sitting on toilet. And thus, the first viral video game is born. Now flush. Slender was the first video game to become an overnight sensation thanks to Let's Players and online virality. Yeah, the Slender Man was already a meme slash myth that was pretty famous amongst fans of the occult, but after the viral explosion of Slender the 8 pages, Slender Man became a bona fide mega franchise. Slender's online popularity resulted in 11 video games, including Slender Rising 2 and a full-blown Hollywood adaptation with a noble 8% on Rotten Tomatoes. This thing went proper mainstream and provided a blueprint for the viral video game industrial complex pipeline. I also want to briefly shout out Minecraft for popping off as a video game internet phenomenon, but that story deserves its own video. Fast forward to 2014 and we're gonna see video game virality shift into overdrive with the release of Five Nights at Freddy's. When it released, FNAF was unknown. Who the fuck is that guy? It had no E3 hype. It wasn't plastered on any billboards or given any Mountain Dew promotions. All it had was Markiplier. Markiplier made one little let's play and this game just bakudaned all over the digisphere. That one Let's Play spawned more Let's Plays, and thanks to the game's hidden tidbits of lore, MatPat and the game theorists started their insanely popular FNAF breakdown series. Entire online communities dedicated to FNAF lore arose from the depths of YouTube comment sections. Off the back of the insane popularity of its Let's Plays, FNAF became a multimedia j -j -j juggernaut. When every new FNAF game released, viral feedback loops perpetually increased FNAF's online presence. New game leads to let's plays, leads to lore breakdowns, leads to new communities. The creator of FNAF, Scott Senpai, is a pretty smart guy, so he poured gasoline onto the FNAF online feedback loop by deliberately adding more and more juicy morsels of lore for fans to munch on with every new game. The two puncher Slender Man and Five Nights at Freddy's solidified the idea that the ultimate viral video game was a low budget indie horror title orientated towards a younger audience. It seemed like all you needed was a viral let's play series and bish bash bosh you'd have a multi million dollar franchise sitting right in your lap. In the case of these quote unquote viral video games, it almost seemed like making a game fun to watch was more important than making a game fun to play. Now the idea of leveraging a meme into a billion dollar business isn't exactly exclusive to video games. This is a phenomenon that's just become a part of life in the 21st century, you dig. You twerk to the right beat, boom, you can be a movie star. You cuss out a bold man, shwang, only fans a megastar. You get beaten up by Floyd Mayweather, alakazam, you can have a podcast. I ain't hating on the meme to millionaire pipeline, I respect the hustle. But the thing about memeing your game into success is that games ain't people, they're products. If they ain't fun to play, people won't stay attached, people won't keep making memes or online communities. No amount of haha funny can paper over a game just not being very good.
With this in mind, I would now like to introduce you to Hello Neighbor. Hello Neighbor is a game that most likely was trying to replicate the viral video game formula. Hello Neighbor was defo trying to imitate that FNAF slash Slenderman viral indie horror vibe. And you know what? For the first couple of months of its alpha release, it was pretty viral. It did tap into the Let's Play market. It did get some cheeky lore videos popping up here and there. Hello Neighbor established a viral presence and then proceeded to Thanos snap its own relevance away. As it was continuously developed from alpha to beta and then to full release, you could tell that the developers were more focused on making Hello Neighbor a viral sensation than a solid video game. Just look at the graphical changes from Alpha 1 to Alpha 2. The game went from moody and spooky to looking like some Coco Melon bullshit. Design decisions were orientated towards getting those precious YouTube kids clicks. Gameplay improvements were also forsaken in favor of stuffing the game with more and more Goo Goo Gaga nonsense, more lore breakdown bait. The game isn't terrible, it's pretty fun, but it's also extremely broken. And when the general consensus is that a game was better in alpha than upon its full release, you know something ain't right. Hello Neighbor has spawned a decent sized multimedia franchise of sorts, so I suppose it succeeded in its mission. After FNAF and Slenderman laid out the groundwork, Hello Neighbor came along and just power drilled those foundations to smithereens. If FNAF and Slenderman are a rickety bridge in the Himalayas, Hello Neighbor is a mildly gusty breeze. To be honest, I was never too invested in Hello Neighbor, so I'm kinda ambivalent to the whole situation. It's just that when game developers go on Twitter and basically beg MatPat to make lore videos about their game, I just, I can't. Something, something has to be done. He can't keep getting away with it! While I've focused on viral indie horror games, the importance of the internet phenomenon of virality has bled into other aspects of the video game world. Before analyzing this bleeding, we must ask ourselves, what is the difference between hype and virality? And my answer would be this. Hype is excitement built up before a game is playable by the public, and virality is the online presence of a game that is available to the public. Some game developers have recognized the hidden potential of virality as a vehicle to create pseudo-hype and to essentially market their game through non-traditional methods. The weaponization of virality was used for example by the creators of Valorant. Riot Games went over to all the top Twitch streamers and fucking javelin beta keys at them. You get a key, you get a key, you get a key, and you get a key. Hey sexy. Suddenly all the big dogs were playing Valorant. So, all these viewers, they suddenly get a strong case of FOMO. Look at this Valorant! Now, the only way to get access to a beta key was to watch a Valorant stream. But, since the likelihood of getting a key from a bigger stream was statistically pretty low, viewers were migrating to isolated streams in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. All of a sudden, every Valorant stream was flooded with viewers. Smaller streamers recognized that Valorant keys seeking immigrants were looking to find a new home, so many of them in turn switched to playing Valorant since it would result in guaranteed views. And thus, a viral feedback loop was created. Everywhere you went, it seemed like all you saw was Valorant. Valorant is the next big thing. Man, you gotta play Valorant. Hey, yo, bruv, let me hit that Valorant I got shit. the best Valorant on the market, my Valorant darling. makes me horny. The perception of Valorant became so inflated thanks to virality that of course that viral bubble eventually had to pop. Do you guys remember Fall Guys? That was another game that weaponized streaming and virality to stealth market itself. Mediatonic, the developers of Fall Guys, pulled a Valorant and discussed Fall Guys beta keys to all the top streamers. All the big boys got involved, including Chuck E. Cheese himself. <laughs> Once again, the only way to get access to your own beta key was to watch a Fall Guys stream, and once again, a viral feedback loop was created. Unlike Valorant, Fall Guys is fun, so people actually played the game this time. Fall Guys quickly snowballed into a popularity juggernaut. Fall Guys was falling upwards. But do you know the difference between flying and falling? Gravity. The Fall Guys trend fell off real fast. A 
Among Us came along and completely cannibalized the Fall Guys media train. It was kinda nutty. Fall Guys was popping off and going viral. It was a video game that transcended video games, but then Among Us just came along and went transcendent even further beyond. The YouTube views were insane. Celebs were playing this game. Politicians were playing this game. And the fucking memes. Among Us generated its own meme economy. Even if you didn't play the game, you knew what Among Us was thanks to those goddamn memes. Who knew that the best way to go viral was to just mispronounce the title of your game? Silly. Shout out to all the broken condoms upholding the Among Us meme industrial complex. Among Us was all over the internet. And then one day, it wasn't. Are you imposter? You're acting sus. Thought you were a crewmate. Now you're. I've joked around about Valorant, Fall Guys, and Among Us being dead games, but the truth is that none of those games are dead, okay? They're all doing fine. I was merely making a playful joke about how much online presence affects our perception of video games. The video game meme slash virality slash popularity cycle, like everything else in the internet world, evolves and changes so damn quickly that games fall and rise every two seconds. I mean, Fall Guys recently had an epic comeback that I wanted to make a video on. I even made this beautiful thumbnail that I'm so proud of, but by the time I had come up with a script and ideas for the video, the ship had already sailed. Fall Guys fell. Again, whether developers intentionally or unintentionally engage with viral meme culture, I think it's interesting to think about how that aspect of the internet is now a pretty important part of how we consume video games. And that's what this video is about, I guess.